Hello friends and welcome to another lecture on operation research. Today we will be learning about queuing and the fundamentals of queuing. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. It's a common place. We all wait in queue. There's a queue for bus ticket, there's queue for cinema ticket, there's queue for government services like your passports. There are queues everywhere. There are queues in clinics too. Well, not very well understood, but yes. Machines waiting to be repaired are also standing in a queue. When there is one mechanic and machines are waiting to be repaired, it can be considered that they are also in queue. Similarly, in an uh, assembly line, electronic products go from one uh, place to another place where assembling is being done. So these electronic products also can be considered to be in a queue because they have to go from one place to another place where they are further worked upon and finally you get the finished product. Waiting for a technician. Now, let's say there is one technician or there is one service agent who has to visit five or six people in an area and repair their laptops. So the customers who are waiting for their laptops to be repaired are also in a queue. So let's see what is the queuing theory. Queuing theory is all about balancing the cost of service and the cost of delay. Whenever you give any service to a person, it costs. But if there is a delay in giving a service, that costs too, because the customer may go to your competitor. When you cannot predict the turning up of customers or you cannot predict the service times, then to queuing th theory, it helps you in achieving a balance between the cost of service and the cost of delay. Now, as we can see that whenever we increase the service, whenever we go on increasing the people who give service, the cost of waiting naturally goes down. But as you increase the people who would give service and, and you increase the service stations, the cost of service will also go up because you are employing more number of people. You are building more assets to give service. So if we add these two costs up to increase service, what we get is total expected cost for operating the facility. And as you can see that the total expected cost has a minima. So this is the minima that we are trying to optimize. This is the optimal cost that we are trying to actually get when we apply queuing theory in operation research. Now, it's good to visualize what are the elements of a queue before we start to actually apply our mathematics to the problem of Q. We have a calling population. From the calling post population, you have customers which come to your system. Now, the system has two parts. The system has a queue that is waiting to be serviced, and the system has facilities that can service the customers. Now, there can be one service facility or there can be n number of service facilities. And after receiving the service, the customers leave the system. So the system consists of a queue and the service facility. Queue is the place where customers are waiting and service facility is the place where customers are being served. And calling population, as indicated earlier, is the area or the population from which the customers actually arrive to the system to get service. Now, let us see what is a calling population. How can we understand what are the elements of a calling population? The calling population are of two kinds. One is finite. 
in a finite calling population the number of customers coming to a queue is dependent on the queue itself that is if there is more number of customers in the queue the rate at which the people join the queue reduces and if there are very less customers in the queue then the rate of the customers coming into the queue increases off now this is known as a finite calling population problem now if you have infinite calling population they would anyway enter the queue whatever would be the service time in a finite calling population you have to remember one thing the number of people are finite because the number of people are finite the probability that a pe person might come to a queue reduces quite a lot and it could be random then you have an infinite calling population where the calling population is so high that it doesn't bother about what the queue is because everybody requires the service then there are certain behaviors in a queue the left side arrow is the customers coming in from the calling population and in this box we have the queue and the blue dots they represents the customers or the elements of the queue now if the customer sees that the queue is very big and it's not moving fast he may decide not to enter the queue now this is known as balking right and if the customer enters in and still finds that the queue is not moving fast enough and leaves the queue after he has entered the queue he leaves the queue because he finds that the queue is not running uh, going smoothly there are problems it may take a lot of time then it is known as reneging an interesting thing that happens and uh, we all see it is jockeying jockeying is when the customer has entered the queue but then he finds that yes there are multiple queues and uh, certain queue seems to be running quick it is seems to be running faster now this does happen in mcdonalds that there is one queue which runs faster and there is one queue which runs slower so people jump from the queue which is slower to the queue which is faster now this is known as jockeying now pattern of arrival now a static pattern of arrival is controlled by the nature of the arrival rate okay now what is arrival rate that is arrival of customers per unit time so it could be constant and it can be random now the random phenomenon is best described by poisson's distribution and the arrival time of a random arrival is best expressed using an exponential distribution now how do we express pattern of arrivals that is random pattern of arrivals mathematically a constant pattern of arrival can be expressed easily yes you have two customers or three customers constantly coming per unit time but when it is random it can be expressed using the poisson's distribution now we have to check whether the random pattern actually is a poisson distribution or not but poisson's distribution is something which everybody uses to model it because it's usually a poisson distribution in poisson's distribution i explain the probability that n customers arrive in a particular time interval that is 0 to 2 minutes or 0 to 3 minutes or so t is the time of inter arrival or inter arrival time the probability that n customers come that is two customers or three customers is equal to lambda into t raised to n e raised to minus lambda t over n factorial now the inter arrival time that is the probability that a customer arrives if the inter arrival time is let us say 2 minutes the probability that a customer a single customer arrives in between that inter arrival time is given by 1 minus e raised to minus lambda t where lambda is nothing but the 
average arrival rate. Then service discipline. Once customers come into the queue, there is a way they are going to be served. There are policies which companies need to keep or customer relation desks need to keep to service the customers. Now, the most common is FIFO. That is first in, first out. That is a customer who comes in first and who takes the token first. His token number, when the term comes and when the server is available or when the customer relation officer is free to take the next customer, he calls it in a chronological order. Right. So the customer who comes in first gets the right to service first. Now, this is usually the case in most of the places. If you are standing in the bus queue or for uh, a ticket in a cinema hall, obviously, when your turn comes, you will be serviced. But there is something known as zero also. That is service in random order. In service in random order from a queue, randomly things are picked up and they are serviced. Okay, this might seem unfair, but yes, it does happen. Now, in an outpatient department, there are patients who come with minor problems. There are patients who come with major health problems. And there are people who require immediate medical assistance, people, victims of accidents. Now, when it is victim of accidents, then you follow the zero, that is service in random order, because they need to be attended first. Then, of course, there is priority. Now, this is different from zero you need to understand one thing in priority what happens is a customer has a right whatever it is whatever be his condition the customer has a right we have priority banking nowadays priority banking is given to customers who have investment in crores in the bank so whenever they enter in the bank there is a surprise counter for them and they are given priority services so when they enter the bank, the very nature when they enter the system, there is a queue in it. But the queue is bypassed. They are not told to wait in a queue for the service, but rather given an immediate assistance because they are priority customers. Servers. Servers are something which serve the customers. Now, it can be a customer relation officer, it can be a ticketing window, it can be a bus in which the passenger enters. So there could be a single server and there could be multiple servers in parallel. In multiple server case, what happens is when the term turn to serve a customer comes in, there are multiple customer relation officers and you can be assigned to any customer relation officer at that point of time because there are multiple parallel or multiple customer relation officers waiting to serve. Now, let's look at service time. Service time when it is constant, it's understood. Yes, you serve two customers in a minute, you serve three customers in a minute, but mostly it is random because service depends on the nature of the complaint or the nature of the job. This is best expressed. What is the service time is best expressed using an exponential distribution. So in exponential distribution, the probability that a customer is served within a time T, that is capital T, which is less than equal to T, where T is nothing but the inter-service time, that is time required to serve, that is 0 to 2 minutes, 0 to 3 minutes, 0 to 4 minutes. So the Big T is the time that the customer is serviced in and time interval between 0 to small t or 0 to 2 minutes or 0 to 3 minutes is nothing but 1 minus e raised to minus mu t. When mu is nothing but the average service rate, where the average service rate is expressed as one customer serviced per unit time or two customers serviced per unit time or three customers serviced per unit time. So it is number of customers serviced in a unit time. That is the average service rate. Now, 1 by mu is nothing but the average time per customer. That's the reciprocal of service rate. So, a reciprocal of service rate is nothing but the average time that it would require to service one customer. So, that was the end of the lecture on queuing fundamentals.
If you like the lecture, do subscribe my channel. There are more lectures to come on operation research on this channel. And if you like this lecture, share this link with your other friends and do ask them also to subscribe it. So goodbye friends, have a great day and keep watching.